Let's take a look at adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Keyword here is unlike denominators. Unlike denominators or when we have fractions that have different denominators, so they do not have common denominators to start with. So for example, one out of three, two out of seven, six out of 11, they have unlike denominators because their denominators are all different. If they had any of the same, we would say they have like denominators. Let's, let's dive right in and show how we can uh, do some adding and subtracting with a diagram. So here's the question we're asked to try out first. Add one quarter plus two thirds. We're gonna go back to how we did things in common denominators by using a diagram. So one quarter and two thirds, I should know that I'm gonna get a diagram that will be broken into four or 12 parts. Um, so I have my diagram right here. I know looking at one quarter, um, it's broken into quarters this direction because I have four parts to that. So I'm going to shade in one of those, one of those columns. And that should show me and help me remember that I have one quarter is equal to three out of 12 because I have three parts shaded out of the whole that is 12. Let's do the same for two thirds. Now with two thirds, we're not going up and down. We're going side to side as far as we broke it apart. Now I need to shade in two out of three of these. So there's one row shaded in and here's my second row shaded in. And I should take a quick look at this and I should see that two thirds is the exact same thing as saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of my whole that is 12. Now the question isn't just asking me to put these into common denominators, it's asking me to combine them. So if I go three over 12 plus eight over 12, I know how to solve this for my last unit. Three plus eight over 12, and I know that three plus eight gives me 11 over 12, and I always check to see if it's in lowest terms, and in this case, it already is. Let's try another example here where we're going to just add with a common denominator. So we're gonna start out, we've got a question, we've got three quarters plus one fifth. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna list out some multiples of four, since that is our first denominator listed. So I've got four, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop right there. I can also take a look at my denominator 5 here, and we can start to find its multiples. we got 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, there's a common denominator. I've got 20, and I've got 20. So I know my common denominator is going to be 20. So I want to deal with 3 quarters. So 3 quarters we want it to be written equivalent, but out of 20. So how would I get from four to 20? I'm gonna multiply it by five. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, multiply by five, three times five gives me a nice 15. Perfect, we have it out of 20, and we're ready to move on to one fifth. So one fifth, we want this to be out of 20 also. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna multiply by what gets me from five to 20? Five times what gives me 20? I should remember that five times four gives me 20. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. One times four gives me, tw or gives me something over 20. So one times four gives me four. Now I've got something that I can deal with. I can use this fraction and this fraction. I can add those together. So I've got 15 out of 20. I can add that to four out of 20. And for my last unit, this is pretty straightforward from here on out. 15 plus four gives me 19 out of 20. I always check to see if not, that's in lowest terms. In this case it is, here is my answer. So three quarters plus one fifth ends up giving me 19 out of 20. Now let's take a look at how we would subtract. So let's subtract three fifths minus one half. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to find the multiples of five and the multiples of two. So again, my five from here, and I know I've got five, 10, 15. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna find my multiples of two. Two, four, six, eight, 10. No need to really go any further because I should recognize right here, I've got 10 as a common denominator. That's what we're gonna go ahead with. So I need to rewrite three fifths to be out of 10. And the more we do this, the quicker we get at this. And I know five times two gives me 10, and so I'll have to do three times two, which will give me six out of 10. Let's do the same thing for one half. 
you'd write that out of a 10. And that one's pretty straightforward. We know a half, the same thing would be five out of 10. So now I can rewrite this in a way that I can answer this using my subtraction knowledge from last unit. I'm gonna write it up here, six out of 10 minus five out of 10. I know I've got six minus five over 10. Six minus five gives me one over 10, one over 10, lowest terms, we're good to go. Let's do another quick example using subtraction just to get a good feel for this. So I've got nine over 10 minus one over two. Um, I'm gonna start by listing out my multiples of two. And that is my second fraction, but the order of listing out multiples doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, list out my multiples for 10 and I list 10. And I should notice that I'm already at one. The common denominator being 10 in this case. Now we're pretty lucky. Um, nine out of 10 is already out of 10, so I don't need to do anything with this. I can just write this as equals nine over 10. It's the exact same thing. I don't need to change this one at all. Now I have to do this for one over two though. I do need to turn this into something over 10. And I should remember that two times five gives me 10. So what I do the bottom, I have to do the top times five. One times five gives me five. So now my question, we're gonna go back up here to the top right. We have nine over 10. We're gonna subtract five over 10. And we're gonna get something that looks like this. Nine minus five over 10. Nine minus five gives me four over 10. Now normally we'd be done, but I need to make sure I'm in lowest terms. And in this case, I am not. So what I have to do to get this guy in the lowest terms is I have to divide the bottom by two and the top by two, because that is the common factor between those two numbers. And my answer ends up being two over five. Now let's do a quick example that applies what we just learned here. You are on your way back from vacation. Hopefully it was an awesome warm vacation. Uh, you fill two thirds of your suitcase with clothes. Another one quarter is used for souvenirs. What fraction of your bag is full? So we wanna figure out how much of your bag is filled up. Then we're gonna figure out what fraction is left once we get done this whole question. So first things first, we got two thirds and one quarter being used up. So we need to add those two together. So I need to turn, we need to find a common denominator for three and for four. Now I'm gonna do that small over here. So three, six, nine, 12, and four gives me four, eight, 12. And right here, I've got a common denominator of 12. So I need to turn two thirds into something out of 12. Now, what times three gives me 12? I should remember that times four does. So what I do the bottom, I have to do the top, times four, two times four gives me eight, awesome. Let's do the exact same thing for one quarter. So I got one quarter equals something out of 12. How do I get from 12 or four to 12? Four times three. So what I do to the bottom, two to the top, one times three. So I've got one times three is three. Now I've got my two fractions in common denominators that I can then add together. So let's take a look. I've got eight over 12 plus three over 12 gives me eight plus three over 12. Eight plus three is 11 over 12. So you've used up 11 over 12 of your bag. 11 twelfths of your bag is full. So I'm gonna write that 11 twelfths of bag is full. And I used bag, we talked about suitcase before. We'll just say they're the same thing. Now it's asking me what fraction is left over. So if I'm thinking of my whole and I'm gonna subtract what's been used, I'm gonna figure out what I have left. So let's do that quick now. So I'm looking at one minus 11 over 12. You should remember that I can rewrite one as uh, a whole over a whole. So I can go 12 over 12 in this case, cause that is what my denominator is, minus 11 over 12. 12 minus 11 gives me one 12th. So I have one 12th left. And I am done that question. Now we should have a good idea of how to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Let's try it out.